Okay, hi everyone. I I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me all right, please confirm on the chat that you can hear me and we can start. Okay, uh, let me, I just upped the uh, speed a bit so the video should be better. I want to do a small uh, stream today. Uh, I will be streaming my desktop. Okay, and here am I. Hi, and Kana is there also. And here you have my, um, how do you call it? Uh, here you have my desktop so you can see uh, what I'm doing and today uh, we will be streaming uh, some painting of a picture in Clip Studio Pro EX. I was um, commissioned by the Clip Studio people to do them an illustration that uh, they can use for uh, their um, promotional purposes and they wanted me to test uh, this application, test their software I have not used uh, Clip Studio so much before, so that was a um, that is a new uh, kind of thing for me. So they wanted me to test this this application for them and say, um, yeah, I'm, I'll be painting, I'll be continuing this, and say what I think about it um, in a video. But also they allowed me. They said they are okay with me doing some um, streaming. So I can show you live how I'm using this uh, application in um, a in a painting. Um, this is how uh, everything being recorded um, because I'm using the um, time lapse function. So later I will make a video as usual from uh, me painting, but I wanted to uh, to show it to you um, also. I'll up the mic a bit so we can hear better maybe. Yay! Um, yeah, and if you have anything uh, to ask me, just ask in the chat. I have my iPad here on the left side, so you can see, so I can see your chat also. And um, yeah, you can see my face and you can see my hands because I wanted to show you also this, which is the um, small keyboard that I'm using for uh, painting today. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit also about this because. Um, uh, I actually reused um, my old uh, painting keyboard that I was using for uh, Procreate later. Uh, I have another one for Pro for Procreate right now, but um, okay, I'll um, make it so. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I can use. I I made it so I can use it in uh, Clip Studio. Let me check the volume a bit. It should be okay. Okay. If um, if we can um, begin, I did this picture um, some uh, for the last. I was doing this picture for the last few days. Um, it started with a sketch. I will just show you the, the layers that I did so far, because it's a bit complicated already there's a lot of stuff so let's quickly go through what I have here on the screen okay so the first layer is the um, the line work uh, I did quite um how do you call it uh accurate line work for this i wanted to have everything drawn 
quite well so then I can focus uh, more on the colors only. Konnichiwa. I had this idea for, for this illustration from a photo that I took um, somewhere in Tokyo. It's like this photo of a tiger in a shop window which is holding something in its teeth I think like a piece of paper I think I don't know why uh, and it kind of stayed with me I wanted to put it into a uh, illustration so I was thinking okay so where does a tiger like this appear uh, I think um, in Toranomon which means that the gate of the tiger but there is not uh, no actual gate of the tiger in Tokyo because uh, there it was there but I it's no longer there so I kind of imagined what a tiger gate would look like. I took a photo from the Kyoto, from Kyomizu Dera, which is th this uh, gate to, a, uh, to the shrine. And I modified it a bit. I modified it how it looks and um, added, the, added the tiger kind of uh, like a lantern thing that is here uh, in the middle. I also wanted to have like a character that would be just walking her dog and the character is based actually on Kana because um, she has the same clothes and the same hair and glasses and we actually we actually have a small puppy dog. <laughs> uh, we uh, got it uh, I think not not a week ago. So if my hands look quite um, uh, how they call it worn down it's just because I'm 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 being beaten all over the place uh, with uh, with these really small sharp teeth so yeah okay so I have the uh, the sketch uh, and I first did like a, a grayscale um, shadows to check uh, where the shadows should go and uh, where um, uh, where the light should go and I'm using here just a few really simple brushes that I downloaded for free from the Clip Studio uh, database of brushes like a pencil brush and some gouache brushes uh, I will be probably doing a, a set of brushes uh, like my own brushes that I wanted to kind of manage uh, and uh, edit myself but for now I'm just using standard brushes that I downloaded it from uh, uh, from the library of, of free stuff that is in in the software uh, and the pencil brush is just like a uh, one of the pencils uh, that uh, was like standard in in this in this set I think it's the colored pencil uh, so um, I, I haven't done so much modifications to the brushes that I'm using just a, a, a gouache one from from I think it's called thick paint from uh, the um free stuff library okay so the next step was um coloring this so i started with just layering everything so for example for the back building i have uh, like three layers which is the base color and the windows make it bigger the windows and um like the details and we'll be doing these today and um, some more details and some more details and for example this building here on the left uh, it has its own kind of folder and um, it has some layers like clip clipping layers on top uh, that uh, I put there to regulate a bit um, the lighting on it so it has a multiplay layer which is the shadow um and a curves layer that helped me get a, uh, a little bit off the contrast here there's the signs and i'll just let me just put it into a layer uh, into a folder so i'll just select this everything here and just put it into a folder so the left building is in a folder and I have another building here in a folder. I don't name my layers. I should. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, left building 01. Left there building. 
okay so that's this one and uh, also this one has a um, curves layer because I, I thought it was a bit too contrasty so I put a curves layer so I'll just group it left building 02 okay and we have the elements of the gate here which also has like a folder like keeping stuff in folders is really useful because you can then put a filter uh, or a shadow which is a creeping mask on the whole folder which is uh, like what I did here uh, this is a shadow uh, with just a multiplay layer I used some like blues and 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 browns like neutral tones to make it um, to make the shadow so it's not so um, so it doesn't make it more colorful and um, then I have this like kind of air layer that is on top which makes the whole thing a bit more kind of smoky but maybe too much put it down a bit something like this so I like to use folders and these colors to mark with what is what and uh, then I have a bit more control over over the whole thing okay and what i have still here oh yeah so these layers here i have to put them into a group also uh, are the layers from the building in front so these are the base layers and then i have some lines and then again the shadow so it's the shadow inside of the window and um two layers of details of the tiger I still have to put some more details on it and a shadow that falls on the tiger and then the box uh, I still have to put some details on this too a uh, glass pane and then some details of the building some line details of this building shadow again and so on I build up the whole thing uh, so these uh, plants are also on the same layer and if um, I have things that are kind of similar and uh, I don't mind having them on the same layer because they are in a different part of the picture I sometimes keep them uh, on the same layer and some lighting layers here also and the characters for for now I just put like um, just simple color on the character because I want to know um, where I have to paint the background and where I don't have to do it because the character will come here so uh, what is still to do in this picture of course the characters but uh, one, I have to do this box. I have to finish the tiger. I have to do some plants here on the uh, on the bottom. I have to do the building in the back, the truck. Uh, some details of the insides of the shop here, like a um, sign here, and of course the details of the building uh, in uh, in the back here on top. So first, probably I'll be doing this thing. Just let me uh, put the building that's in front in its separate kind of folder so we can manage it better. We have the lighting. Okay, so this is the... Uh, this one and probably let's put this here. Okay, and we have the details of the plants also. The lines of the plants also. Okay, and this also is... This should be a separate group, maybe. So the lighting is on top and the characters. Uh, okay. So these are the front elements. Yeah. And the trees. So I like to, for example, keep my layers that are on overlay or on screen, like make them green so I know that these are lighting layers so I turn them off while I'm working, while I'm painting so I don't have, so I don't pick um, weird colors and also I like to mark my um, shadows with blue so I know that this is a shadow, a multiplay layer so I can um, turn it on and off and I know wh where it is. So let's group this also and make it a name gate so i know that this is the whole gate folder i can turn it on and off yes okay
Oké. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, basically I have no experience in painting in uh, Clip Studio. I uh, got this uh, program um, from the good Clip Studio people. Uh, I agreed to, um, to this because I thought that a lot of the paintings that are done to show how Clip Studio can be used uh, are really, really similar. So um, I thought that uh, I would like to try something different. Um, there are a lot of like characters and um, these kind of cutesy characters that I don't really like. So um, I, I thought that, not really like, I think there's like too much of them. So I thought that, okay, if I do this, um, I'll try to do something that's uh, more my style. So maybe a background, like a scene. Uh, of like a Jap Japanese street or something like that. So I uh, proposed that to the Clip Studio um, people who wanted me uh, to do an illustration for them. And they said, okay, you can paint whatever you want and you can also say whatever you want um, about the software um, in your videos. So I agreed to do this because um, I, I already had Clip Studio, the cheaper version, the uh, on uh, Clip Studio Paint on my computer, I but I haven't had any kind of I don't know incentive to try it. I wanted to try this version, which is the the, the better version, uh, which has the additional features of um, uh, for manga comic artists and for animation. So um, I wanted to try this for some time, and this was kind of a nice um, um, occasion to. To try it, and here uh, I'm trying to do um, some kind of fake insides. I want to simulate that this office building, the windows are transparent, so I'm trying to paint some like beams and and stuff inside. So I'll probably add some like lightning, so ceiling lights, and um, I don't know a copy machine that is here, for example, and some shelves or something that. We can see through the window. Um, and this doesn't have to be really complicated because the building is really small here in the background, so I don't have to do it like really detailed. But it's nice that we can see something inside. Uh, if you see, look at an office building, you can see, uh, especially uh, if the face of the building is in the shadow, uh, you could, you should see something inside. So if you have any questions about the software, um, you're welcome to ask. I don't know if I'll be able to answer because I'm a bit of a novice in this uh, application. I know how to paint digitally, but um, I use really basic tools in any application that I use, um, especially if it comes to just painting stuff. So um, I don't use so much like advanced functions, but I want to um, make a second part of this and to use this picture maybe as a background to maybe animate something really um, quickly. So far the experience is really good. Um, I have been using it for like a week and a half for this picture and I must say that um, I haven't had any problems with it, like technical problems. I had just one little glitch that um, was kind of annoying uh, when I first started to use it. The, the cursor, the, the, the cursor on the screen kept like blinking on and off and it was like really switching fast uh, between the uh, brush icon, like the brush size and like just a regular uh, Mac cursor. But after a quick um, reboot of my computer, it went away. And I think it's a bug caused if you um, turn on um, Clip Studio and Photoshop at the same time, in, in my case. So I think that's, um, I don't know if it's really a, a, a problem of, of, of Clip Studio or uh, like a, a bug of Photoshop maybe. Uh, and uh, on this um, computer, it runs really smooth. This is the 
let me show you this is this so this is the uh, mac mini with M m1 apple um, cpu so uh, even on this um, really new computer it, it runs really smoothly without any problems i didn't have to turn it off uh, i didn't turn it off for i think uh four or five days uh, so it's always there in the background and i'm still painting uh, and it's still recording the time lapse okay and i, I haven't had any problems with it uh, and um, it's fast uh, the picture is quite big it's i think uh, 4500 pixels um, wide and i have no problems with the uh with the efficiency of of the application the only thing that um i wish it would be a bit better is that the uh time lapse that i can record is only 1200 um it's re it's only 1200 pixels wide so it's not uh, or high uh, but it's not like 4k uh, on procreate i can do uh, 4k 4k recording which is really nice uh, but here the the time lapse is a bit lower resolution and sometimes I get this um, uh, recovery um, save which is good because it's a recovery save but um, um, I guess I can turn it off in uh, in the settings but I don't feel confident yet enough to turn it off <laughs> I'll turn it off and it explodes the next second I turn it off so no, maybe not yet um, So yeah, it, it's, it, it works great. Uh, I had a lot of files opened in it. Um, uh, most of the options that I wanted are just there. So I don't, don't even have to look for, for them are in similar places. I had to spend some time to adjust the brushes a bit. The ones that I downloaded were okay, but I wanted to adjust them uh, just a bit um, to fit uh, uh, with my uh, drawing style. Uh, but that was it basically uh, i was able to switch from painting in photoshop to painting in um, creep studio quite seamlessly so yeah my my day my day is well i have been bitten a um, few dozen times by our new dog but a part of that i'm golden <laughs> Well, not maybe golden, but let's say that uh, we are we are quite okay. Kana just uh, published twelfth uh, episode of her monthly uh, comic about Edo Tokyo, so she is also happy about that, and I'm also happy about that. It's really really great, and um, we are thinking that uh, when the book uh, when the comic becomes a book maybe we should really uh, just focus on it a bit and um, prepare an English language version for you to read which would be awesome I would so like to uh, do a cover picture for it but I don't know if she will allow me <laughs> So yeah, I'm trying to just add some geometry here, like um, inside of the windows. So there is something there. I'll maybe pa paint some blinds, like take some color from somewhere and just make this darker one. And just pa paint some like blind looking things and add some shadow here. Okay. Like I did similar thing here. So I just like simulated some insides. It doesn't have to like have anything actually in the and here for this window i think it's not actually a window it's like an alcove so i'll just make it maybe this color
Uh, hi Marco, what do you mean by do you also write? Yes, we have a new puppy. <laughs> and um, she is of all the kind that um, is really cute but bites a lot. Uh, it's really, uh, she's really young, um, I think like two months. So that's kind of given. I have been, I have had uh, dogs in Poland when I was still there, but we always got them from somewhere. So we al always had them a bit raised. Um, so I, it's the first time we, uh, I have, uh, I have to take care of a puppy that's so young. And it's not as bad as I expected, but um, we have to have we have to do something about the biting, biting. <laughs> ah, uh, I switch colors by using this button here, which is just out, um, and I pick them from a place from the picture that I already have. So if I want some blue, I pick it from here. I can adjust it a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I rarely use uh, like a color picker or something. Uh, I rarely use like the palette. At this stage of the picture, most of the colors I want to use are already here. So if I need a color, I just look for some color that's the closest one that I already used. And um, that's fast and it also allows me to keep like the picture uh, consistent. So as you see, I almost uh, don't use um, any like um, many functions of or something if I don't have to so if I just uh, if I want to uh, pick a layer I can just do it like from a, from a shortcut ah yeah I, I write a bit um, I want to write my own uh, comics my own stories for for comics mostly and if I can write a novel some someday um, that would be awesome so I'm kind of learning uh, how to write. Um, I'm trying to write some things. I actually write, wrote some short stories, but they are not good enough to uh, show them to you yet. Uh, but yeah, someday uh, I would like to publish them online. And um, I wrote uh, a comic called Yuragi, which you can um, see already uh, and buy on uh, Gumroad or uh, if you are on my Patreon you can download it also um, but yeah I, I would like to be able to um, write something a bit more um, not ambitious but better <laughs> yeah this stream will be archi archived and also I will be doing a video about this whole picture and the process of making it um it's part of the deal i have with clip studio they want me to make uh, this illustration but also uh, publish a video about my experience with this um software on my channel and i don't do like these kind of um deals un unless i really have um my private interest in 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 this piece of thing that i will test so i get some offers for example to test watercolors and so on but um i have enough of watercolors and i have enough of paints and, and things that i use in my art so i don't actually have any uh incentive to do it i try not to do it only to 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 get money from the sponsorship and to to get a lot of stuff because i don't need more stuff um, but um, I wanted to test Keep Clip Studio for some time uh, f uh, from the time where when um, they added the animation features to um, to this software, which uh, already is quite powerful. But uh, now that it has the animation soft uh, features, I wanted to test it um, to just see if I can uh, get away without buying, for example, TV Paint or some really really expensive like professional animation uh, programs because animating in Photoshop is really bothersome 
there are a lot of options missing from from Photoshop that are uh, really really necessary to just to do the simplest things uh, with animations like the light table options and so on are not there. Uh, you can do some simple things. Kana did her like uh, eat people eating animations in Photoshop, but it was a uh, kind kind of an arduous process. So. I'm keeping my sights on um, Blender and I'm keeping my sights also on Clip Studio. So far I like the Clip Studio enough that I think um, I, I really have just a few things in, in Photoshop that um, I, I like and I would like to have here. I don't know. Uh, I still have not explored Clip Studio enough to uninstall Photoshop but I'm kind of close to doing it uh, because I just don't if I have the clip studio I just don't feel like I need Photoshop because I'll be just doubling uh, on the same functionality actually so um, I know that I can do some fancy brushes here um, there are n there are no there aren't some options that I need um, but yeah maybe I can get away without uh, these I really have to test if I can do uh, things like um, smart objects in Clip Studio. I haven't tested it yet, but if if it has smart objects, that would be really, really great. I have to figure it out. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. Uh, I mean, I, I'm used to uh, using a lot of different painting applications. I have been using um, Coral Painter for years and then uh, switched to Photoshop. Uh, recently, I have been using um, uh, Procreate a lot. So I really don't care what application it is if, uh, if just it has the basic options that I need. So, um, and obviously Clip Studio has more than I need but um, for some really really rare cases uh, for example when I edit uh, things for my books um, I need options like the smart object so I can do some editing without uh, modifying the original content um, if it's possible here also that would be really great Thank you. Yeah, Blender is always um, a, a bit um, too difficult for me. I, I did some 3D in Blender uh, for like reference purposes, but it's always um, this process of, I want to do something really simple. I go in and um, 10 minutes after I start, I'm already on Google looking for how to do something. And it kind of kills my creativity because I cannot focus on just painting or, or like sculpting. I guess if I get really um, good at it, it will just be a second nature as, as I'm doing here with, with, with the painting application. But uh, so far I don't feel it at all. Um, I Though I hear from my friends that are working in the game industry that uh, more and more um, game developers are moving to blender because it's just better and cheaper than some of the like really professional um, applications that uh, made up most of the market so far but um, now um, it seems that they are moving um, towards blender which is really good i guess because uh, you can um, you don't have to buy like really expensive applications to just learn how to do stuff and the things that you learn are uh, applicable to um, the professional industry which is really really good uh, i don't have a deadline on this i mean i have a deadline but it will it is a long deadline i had a month and a half to finish it uh and <laughs> still not not done uh, but i it took me uh, i think a week of, of work to get to get this far uh usually in the animation studio i would have um like a day or or two days to finish uh background which is less complicated than this but still complicated enough um to be bothersome
to finish in such a small amount of time but um, then again um, when we paint a uh, background for an animated movie we don't pay attention um, to make it like perfectly unique you reuse a lot of elements from um, things that you did already um, you use some tricks to not have to paint some uh, things if, if you feel that a scene is too complicated you can just like uh, don't paint what's behind the windows or don't paint what's behind the um, how do I call it um, display windows of, of, of the shop and so on uh, but this is like an illustration that I want to what I want it to look really good so um, and also because generally when I paint my own stuff I want it to look really good so I'm not treating it uh, as a commission really I'm treating it as a piece that I'm doing uh, of my own art and um, just by coincidence uh, Creep Studio is paying me for, for it because they wanted to use it so I like to think about it like this uh, that's why I don't usually agree to commissions that um, try to dictate me what I have to do and how it has to look uh, because um, if they start doing it uh, I just cannot th think about it as my own piece anymore so much Recovery, saving. Okay, let's wait a bit. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, my website is not like a gallery. Uh, you can go to um, my Behance, which is linked there. I guess there is a bit more stuff there. Um, I need like a grayish color. Let's pick it from somewhere. Um, I don't know wh what are the, the origins, but um, I remember I was drawing a lot when I was a kid. Um, I, I really liked to actually take like a book or a picture from that I found somewhere and try to sketch or paint with watercolors the buildings that I found in this book. I always kind of liked to do pictures of buildings and of like uh, scenery, lakes and mountains and trees. Um, I thought that I was really good at drawing trees, but um, <laughs> uh, of course, I, even no, now I, I think I'm not really good at dra drawing trees, so I guess the more we know the the more we know that we don't know so um it's important to not to lose your confidence the more you can actually do but i had a lot of fun doing these uh my parents uh, encouraged me a lot they they told me that my pictures are were were nice um so I, even though I, st I started to learn um, about computers and uh, I went to a school about computers, I did not uh, quit uh, my kind of drawing hobby. Uh, I'm using the Wacom um, Intuos, the bigger one. It's uh, the, the most standard, standard one that you can, you can buy, I think. <laughs> Good one. So 
I wanted to put like a water tankish thing. I don't know if it matches the design. Maybe it's okay. Um, put like a cool cooling unit next to it also, maybe two. So that will make it a bit more not so much out of place maybe uh, I take a lot of inspiration from Hayao Miyazaki not maybe so much direct inspiration of how to draw and paint um, I like uh, the backgrounds that they do um, in the animation but um, they're a bit more uh, too too much Ghibli style to s for me to just um, inspire myself directly. I want to have my own style, so I try to look deeper and try to analyze why they um, painted it this way or that way, uh, why this looks like this or like that, why this is featured and this is not featured. So, um, kind of when we talk about animation kind of talks up a lot about uh, uh, this um, kind of phenomenon phenomenon way of thinking uh, that a lot of like aspiring aspiring artists but also like um, really well established animation um, artists do uh, to become Hayao Miyazaki you just have to um, be older and have a beard and uh, work all the time and be kind of grumpy <laughs> Which of course will not make you paint, paint like Hayao Miyazaki because you have to um, uh, kind of think deeper about why he is doing the things he is doing and why he is doing them uh, in the way that he is doing them. So um, instead of being um, directly kind of inspired in his way of painting and drawing, I am a lot uh, inspired about the way of thinking about things that he does. Uh, at least I try um, not to be like this. Um, what do you call it? Uh, only look at the shiny part, the, the 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 top part of the pictures that he does, uh, but uh, look a bit deeper. But yeah, I, I like the art style of Studio Ghibli a lot, and uh, when I started doing. Um, uh, paintings digitally I learned a lot from uh, the art of uh, books from Studio Ghibli and also art books of um, of course uh, Makoto Shinkai if it comes to digital methods but um, meritorically I think I'm closer I want to be closer to um, Ghibli works I guess I think it's kind of okay I try not to zoom too much because I, I get into details and it's not good. Okay, and let's get back to this one. So I have this um, uh, function here that allows me to select a layer by pressing uh, just a button here. So I don't really use the uh, layer selection um, window on the right. Uh, most of the times when I paint, I can just select the layer I want by clicking on it while holding this one button which is really useful. You can do it also in Photoshop. Um, I think it's V on Photoshop, like V. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking actually about making an animation. It's a bit difficult right now. Um, do some like timelines that I have, like personal timelines. <laughs> 
but um, yeah, I have an animation project. Um, I am posting um, concept art and stuff from this project on my Patreon and a bit on Instagram too. Um, I want to do like a set of illustrations that will explore this world and if those illustrations turned if those illustrations turned out to have like this one illustration that um, will be a nice inspiration for the the final animation i will try to do it um just i don't know when but um yeah i want to do like a short animated thing what is it erase okay and let's modify the color of the beams a bit so i want to select them lock them and look for a nice color that we can use what color we can use for this maybe let's try mm, i want to make it a bit different than the other two buildings so let's go for this bluish color and then see wha how it works so i still want to kind of keep it wooden like looking like wood but i want to make it uh, uh, different than the uh, other two buildings um it's not so difficult to make a movie at all if you have an idea if you have staff that knows what they are doing um, you can make a movie with no problem, but um, the problem comes uh, <laughs> to actually figuring out a good theme, a good story, um, a good layout, a good character design, and a good everything. Um, so it's not technically difficult right now to make a movie that actually moves and 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 and, and does something. Um, the problem is um, that there's so much of stuff o on on uh, Netflix and YouTube and everywhere uh, that that um, everything that um, you want to actually matter has to be really really well made. Um, I can make a project that will be just kind of an indulgement in like spending money on animators, and it it probably will look okay. Uh, but uh, I don't want to do something that will be just like a vanity project. So um, uh, if I make an animation, I want to make it so it actually has some meaning and uh, something to tell um, supporting it, I guess. This is mostly from imagination. Um, I just used the reference here for for the gate, which is uh, a bit different. I just used it as as a guide, and I had a photo of the tiger <laughs> on the on the right side. But uh, the buildings are based on some things that I saw um, in when we went to some trips ar around Japan. But uh, there's no uh, like a direct reference in this in uh, for this scene. So I made first few sketches and um, tried to um, l make it look nice as a composition and then um, I did this uh, digitally again. Like this. Okay. So I can choose this layer here, lock it and is it this one yes Let's make it maybe this color okay so it fits the rest i i will um, often use like these weird colors to um block out something so i know uh, the the shape is nice and then i can i can so this is this layer. Oh, okay. So it's actually underneath this, this, 
This is the sky. This is the wind. Okay, so it's this group. Okay, let's group it. Group, and it's just one group right now. So I can add a layer above it. Uh, right click it, and I can select the clip to layer below. I can um, make it into multiply. Change the color so I know that it's a multiply layer. When I look at it, at the list, and now we can add a shadow. I want to make the shadow not so strong. So first let me just paint it and then we can um, make it lighter and make it more interesting. Uh, tips on drawing backgrounds. Um, backgrounds is a background, which means that uh, it, it's not an illustration. So it's something that has to support the overall picture, be interesting enough that um, you feel like you are in this place or you feel like uh, this place has such and such atmosphere to it and the scene is like um, in the rain or is sad or is happy. Uh, but uh, what background is not is uh, it's not a perfect representation of reality. At least it, sh it should not be. Um, in my opinion so um, if you are drawing a background um, you should always remember that you are drawing a picture that um, uh, has to support a certain scene has to support a certain feeling has to make people uh, think in a cer certain way so uh, you always have to try to um, do this kind of weird uh, act of uh, mind not reading, but mind transfer of telepathy, trying to make people feel um, the, the feeling that you want them to feel. Um, my first art job was not actually an art job so, so much. Uh, when I was still in Poland, uh, I was learning how to do uh, computer stuff. So I was learning programming and, and things, but I was still drawing. I was interested in the computers. And I was hired by the Wacom company, actually, the, the guys who sell these tablets, uh, to go uh, to art shows and photography shows and uh, computer shows and stuff like that to show people how to use these tablets and to explain that these can be used to paint and, and do stuff on the computer. And uh, the main target was uh, people who were doing photography, so like retouching of photos and um, uh, how do you call it? Um, e e photo editing and so on, um, and not so much painting. So I was painting a bit, I was doing like a really simple paintings just to show uh, that um, this tool is actually uh, a lot more efficient than. Um, just using a mouse for a lot of things not only painting and and so on um because a lot of people would just come and be like ah you know i can uh, but i cannot paint so it's not a use for me and so on but uh, when i showed them that um, they can actually be uh, a lot more efficient when using a tablet in uh, applications like lightroom they will be like, oh, okay, so maybe we can actually buy one or two for our studio and try retouching the photos with this instead of a mouse, which most of the times were worked well. Um, so that was my first job, actually using my kind of art uh, related um, abilities to earn some money and um, do something. But um, as soon as I finished my university in Poland and I was looking for a job that was a bit more creative, like allowing me to do illustrations and, and, and uh, stuff, uh, I, I hit a wall and I could not find anything. So I, I was really glad that um, I was able to go to Japan using the scholarship that I got from uh, actually um, Japanese government. So my first job, um, like really art job in, in, in Japan was uh, actually um, doing backgrounds for Makoto Shinkai, which uh, I was really lucky to get. Also, not only because it's a, it was a great job, but also um, because I was able to stay in Japan 
thanks to it. Um, when I have no ideas, I just go for photos. Um, when I go around and um, look for interesting things, I always try to take a photo or two if I find something that kind of piques my interest. If it's an old shop or just like a detail or a person that I th thought was kind of interesting or some picture somewhere or something just anything that actually kind of interests me and for some reason uh makes me kind of curious about what 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 it is and what story does it have uh i tried to take a picture just with my phone is okay and um i try not to use my phone so much uh so lately i have been actually going around with a camera like a digital um one and um, when I feel that I really don't know what to do, uh, I try to be inspired with some of, uh, of the photos that I took and uh, some of the tools that I have. Especially that, um, especially with the tools, I um, try to have some two or three tools. It doesn't have to be something special. Um, for example, now I have just like a ball pen that I'm kind of excited to, excited to test. And um, when I think that this ball pen will be useful for this um, getting me out of uh, I don't know what to do um, phase. So when I feel that um, I don't have any ideas, I'm like, okay, so let's just try this tool that I um, got recently. And I go for the ball pen and uh, I'll try to sketch something with from a photo that I um, took somewhere. And um, on the way somewhere there, maybe an idea pops out uh, from connecting two, three things together. Like This is also a great technique. Um, if you don't have any photos or anything that kind of makes you interested and, and oh, this is nice. Uh, and then um, try to connect two or three of them together. So if you have a shop or a street or a person or something that is interesting, but um, the rest of the photo is kind of meh, uh, you can just go and mix it together with different photos. So you get a um, nice scene. Yeah, but um, the first job that was I was working uh, for Makoto Shinkai was after years of of doing stuff um, by myself and also at the university. So um, and also I was not like just scouted. Uh, I had to do um, uh, my own like the animation that I was doing the right places so it was like eight months of just doing my own animation to uh, get kind of not <laughs> noticed by uh, the animation studio so um, that was not an easy period I was under a lot of stress because um, uh, basically uh, my ability of staying in Japan and doing the work that I wanted to do uh, dependent of uh, depended on how well I was going to do my um, own animation and I was not uh, good at it and I did not know <laughs> what I was doing <laughs> most of the times so um, it was a constant uh, eight months of experimenting and and um, kind of head scratching at what I should do actually so I was really glad that I managed to finish it and it w went okay but uh yeah the that um process was not um light in any way uh because um i had the chance that um 
uh, I fin uh, if I finish the animation, there was a chance that even though I finish the animation, uh, they would be like, oh, you know, but um, your style is not good for our studio or whatever. And uh, I would be st spending eight months uh, in my last eight months in Japan on doing animation that would be not good for anything. So um, I took the risk. It, it paid off. But um, there was a lot of um, hard work behind it, actually now that I look at it. Okay, so we have the base, more or less. Um, the shadow is also okay. I'll make it lighter a bit in a second. I still have to color this part here. Okay. Uh, let's just generally make it lighter. So I will use this uh, hue saturation luminosity thing. So make it lighter. Something like this, I guess. Okay, have a great meal. Yes, I have I have a lot of sketchbooks, physical sketchbooks actually. I uh prefer to do my sketches by hand. Um, I prefer digital only when I'm not really um, comfortable with what I'm doing with the scene. Uh, so I have to experiment a lot and move things around. So uh, in, in this kind of... Um, in, the in those times I use um, digital to sketch, but mostly I, I use... Um, just my sketchbooks and um, okay and blackwing pencils or any other pencil that I just have and I think I have some videos on my sketchbooks uh, on patreon but maybe I should do also for for YouTube thank you So here I need a bit more local contrast between the front building and the, the gate and the building in the back, so I'll leave the shadow a bit darker. And also I forgot uh, to extend the building, uh, which is the base uh, layer, this one, okay. I'll extend the building here down. Okay. And here also. And I'll add the windows there. Let's say it's this layer. Okay, yes. Blue color. Um yeah, I worked on um few movies that were made by that studio but I also uh, did backgrounds for your name I did oh there's a storm outside I did uh, about 120 backgrounds so about not not exactly but something around one tenth of all the backgrounds that were used for that movie uh, so actually I painted painted a lot of, of them but uh, we also did stuff like the space dandy uh, animation like one episode and I did uh, backgrounds for um, uh, Hannah and Alice uh, Satsujin Jiken, so Hannah and Alice uh, Murder Case, I think it's called. And um, I did the poster for Tenkinoko uh, background, as a weathering with you, the background for the poster, and so on. But um, I uh, quit the animation studio already, I think, four years ago. to do my books and stuff just an advice if you use swear words in the chat the chat will hold it so probably if I don't okay it I it will not show <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yeah, but weathering with you only the background for the poster. I was busy doing my own book, the Tokyo at Night, and I uh, was not uh, on the background stuff then, uh, so because I already quit the animation company. So they asked me to help with the poster. Uh, so the poster that has <coughs> both of the main characters like standing on a roof, I did the roof scene. Uh, yeah, Hannah and Dalis was actually really fun um, uh, because um, it was like a second part of a movie that uh, was already released a few years before. Uh, so they wanted to do like a sequel for th this movie, uh, but um, as an animation. So we had to um, recreate some of the um, places from the original movie. Uh, which were already kind of destroyed because the, the, the place was no longer there and so on. And uh, the whole thing was kind of watercolor style and uh, a bit more loose. Uh, so I liked it. Um, actually, it was it was a really nice project to work on. But I also really liked working on the Space Dandy <laughs> uh, episode. We did the, epi I think, episode eight, uh, which is like uh, on a trash planet. So we just had to draw a lot of trash and random stuff. So that was a really relaxing thing to do. Okay, so uh, I have the building here more or less done. Uh, and the last thing that I like to do in this style of drawing is um, adding some lines. So on top of the building, uh, it's saving. So on top of the building, I'll add some lines to add a bit of definition to the whole thing. So I'll put a layer here make it yellow so i know that it's a, a line layer and i like to add these lines that um, make the picture look a bit more complicated than it actually is so add for example if i have a window i like to add this um, shadow that adds the thickness to it and let me put pick a color that's not so dark maybe a bit darker so this way uh, i can with the line i can add uh, some three dimensionality to um, elements that are just simple and flat so we think that this window is uh, a bit thicker and has nice glass than it actually is Something like this. Um, my inspiration is around me. I mean, I live in Japan. If I was living in a different country, I would be probably doing uh, drawing different things. Uh, but um, I like um, how Japan looks, and uh, I like the traditional um, architecture and so on. Uh, and I take a lot of inspiration from just things that I randomly see on uh, the internet because uh, lately we have not been able to go out so much but uh, when we can and there's no um, lockdown and so on I go outside, take pictures, uh, look for things that I will not probably use directly in my work I will I, I rarely go for like uh, redrawing scenes that are just photographed but um, uh, these elements always kind of um, go into my creative belly and then get um, digested and um, uh, they turn into these elements in some of my work that um, I haven't expected uh, so much. So maybe I saw windows like this on a building that I saw somewhere but um, I don't remember where it was. But lately I have been doing a lot of pictures when I put elements that I would like to see in places like this. So 
I would like to see a high-rise building like this, which looks more Japanese and has kind of Japanese style windows and walls. So that's why I'm painting one right here. I haven't seen one like this in Tokyo and anywhere else, actually. So by just by adding these lines, uh, I can um, make the windows look a bit more complicated um, and realistic, but also I can do some highlights. So for example, here, uh, I will add a highlight to this part here. So um, it looks like the light is hitting this roof here. So when we look at it zoomed out, um, it kind of looks like the light is hitting this part. So I pay a lot of attention to the edges to use them to my advantage. And add uh, more dimensionality to the to the object i don't know how big the file is it depends on the software um in procreate you also have the video also to think about and here also uh, because this application also has the ability to uh, record time lapses so the file can end up really big actually um if it ho if it comes to the file size Yeah, this is the first time I'm using it for actually for something. Uh, I had Clip Studio, the cheaper version, for a long time uh, on my hard disk, but I have not used it for anything. But uh, yeah, now that uh, Clip Studio actually asked me to use their application to do some art and, and do a showcase uh, piece, I, um, well, I'm using this one. And actually having a lot of good time with it but to be honest i don't draw so much on um the tablets uh on the on my computer i mostly d draw if i have to draw something digitally i mostly go for the ipad so probably the next step will be to check uh, clip studio on the ipad but um uh, i don't like so much the fact that i have to pay monthly for it on the ipad um the really good thing about the clip studio on the desktop is that i can just pay once for the application and i don't have to pay for it again uh, so i really like uh, applications that allow me to just buy it and uh, don't fuss about the monthly payment Okay, I have to change battery in the camera. Okay. Yeah, I have I have tried the Medibank paint uh, app, uh, but um, better than that, I liked uh, Art Studio Pro and Clip Stu uh, Procreate so far. 
Uh, I haven't tried the mobile version of Clip Studio yet, um, but um, yeah, that's something that uh, I'll probably do. But I was looking for something to replace Photoshop on my desktop. Uh, and I think Clip Studio can be a good replacement, especially that I can buy it um, with a one-time payment, the cheaper version and the ex more expensive version. Uh, so that's a great thing. If you want to know the prices and so on, just go to their website. Um, they have an English version and a Japanese version and other language versions too, which is good. And If you just want to paint something and don't uh, necessarily need the animation functions and so on and uh, the advanced an uh, manga uh, options that are in the EX version um, I can I think that you can get the um, cheaper one and it still will be really good for just painting uh, but I haven't looked closely at the differences between these I'm using here the EX version, so the, the better the better one. But it's still not so expensive that I would not uh, I would I could not just go and buy it and use it if it's like a professional tool for me. It costs more or less the same thing, the same as um, for example Final Cut and so on applications that I use uh, to make my uh, YouTube videos. I mean, the Adobe uh, subscriptions are not like deadly uh, if you are using just one app. So, for example, if I'm using just Photoshop, it's it's a kind of okay because for um, like ten dollars, I think I can get Photoshop and um, Lightroom, uh, which is not bad of a deal. Uh, but uh, if I was going to um, make, for example, YouTube videos also with Adobe software, that's really, really a, uh, a different story because I would have to have uh, the whole package, which is expensive monthly payment. And um, I had a think about that. I thought a lot about uh, if I really need to be so compatible with other people and so on and decided that I will just try Final Cut Pro and uh, Motion for making my videos and so far they work really well as expected on uh, on the Mac so I'm happy about that but I still was hanging uh, to uh, Photoshop for painting and editing some things that I scan for example um, I use Photoshop a lot to edit my uh, scans, so the pictures that I uh, draw by hand and then scan. Um, I still have to test if Clip Studio will be good for that. And also uh, we used a lot of Photoshop for making, uh, for example, the animations that Kana do on her YouTube channel. And um, the Clip Studio seems to have also the animation features, so uh, I also want to test that too. Yay, Kana! Mieru. Eto. Kokorahen. Kana. Lag a arun dakedo ne? It's really weird weather right now in Tokyo because uh, it looks like a storm outside, but it's kind of bright. Uh, I'm just using some r simple, uh, how do you call it? Um, free brushes from the Clip St Studio Paint uh, library of brushes. Uh, I just downloaded them for, for free. So you can also download them for free from there, but I will probably make my own brushes if I continue to use this uh, for painting and editing my stuff, and probably I will. 
Um, I some of the brushes that I had for from Photoshop uh, actually I opened in Creep Studio and uh, they worked. Some of them worked really well, but um, about half of them worked not well enough for me to use them. So I have to kind of redo them in Creep Studio to be able to use them for painting. I will do that and I will upload them to my Gumroad for you to use. And I still have to. Um, upload the new uh, Procreate brushes which are on my Patreon only so far No, probably I will not be streaming until this, it, this is finished. I think I'll, it will take me a, um, today and tomorrow and probably the day after tomorrow to finish the, the especially the characters. Um, I want to keep them kind of simple style, but uh, um, it takes me a lot of time to do the characters. So even though uh, I may be able to finish the background today, uh, I still have the characters to do. Um, yeah, I think uh, about the payment, it depends on the studio. I was uh, in, the stu in a studio that um, treated us well, especially, um, but they were in a kind of favorable position because the animation that we did uh, w went um, kind of viral and uh, made a lot of money. So we got our bonuses and everything, but um, I can imagine some situations that uh, people don't get get paid uh, for overtime because it's still kind of in this industry way of thinking that the animation is everything and you should be just happy that you're able to work on uh, such a great thing. <laughs> and uh, payment is kind of secondary thing that um, is there for you just to survive and uh, they make more animation. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that the book uh, Studio Ghibli about the layouts is, is nice if you are into layouts. Uh, I'm personally more about um, uh, storyboards and more about the finished backgrounds. So I, I don't look at that book so much even though I have it. Okay, and I'll add some effects on the windows. It's this layer here, so I'll add a new layer above it, make it a creeping mask thing, and add some um, kind of rough textures. Something like this, maybe, to make it more glass like. Especially on the part where the, the light hits it, so it looks more like like hit like like is light is hitting it. I'm going over a book that's called Over Story, which is uh, just a novel, uh, and so far I like it. Uh, though it's a lot longer and more involved than I expected. Uh, but I'm still kind of in 30% in over it uh, in it, so uh, I don't really know if it will be uh, really good or not. 
uh, but I have read uh, Kazuo Ishiguro's uh, remind the reminders of the day, which was really good. So not really animation or anything related, but um, I recommend these two books because I really like them so far. Uh, so I switched to this layer to screen mode so I can add it a bit more fine control it. So now it looks a bit more like a glass, I guess. <laughs> uh, I have some embarrassing embarrassing pictures that I did. Uh, a lot of them are hanging in uh, on the walls of my parents' house. So um, there you go. But um, I thrown away a lot of stuff too. I'm not really um, kind of sentimental about that um, if I don't like something I will um, throw away a lot of uh, my sketchbooks and so on that I thought that uh, I don't need them anymore uh, but yeah not so much just a bit okay This part should be more in light, actually. Uh, for for Yuragi, I may may do like a set set of um, comics, maybe some someday. Uh, I would like to do something like that, like um, a book of short comic stories. And if I do one, uh, I guess Yuragi will be in it. But first, I have to <laughs> draw the rest of the of the comics. Hello. Yes, I will be doing a, a separate video on this too. I want to show you the whole process, which was um, a bit more involved than it usually is. But um, yes, there will be a, a, a kind of speed painting video. This is actually some um, like alternative hip hop that I downloaded from um, uh, the Epidemic Sound um, service that I use for all my music on my channel. So if you go to their website and just look for some tunes there, they have a lot of these kind of um, songs. which uh, I use a lot for my videos, but I also sometimes like to just listen to. So here I want to put some tigers in also in this shop because um, I don't know why this shop also serves, sells tigers. So I'll just roughly um, paint one here because I have 
I want the, the, the kid to be uh, the main part here, so I'll just uh, paint the tiger as a background. Something like this, and maybe like a nose and some eyes like this. Open mouth, maybe. Uh, yeah, I have heard about it, but I haven't uh, used it. Um, to be honest, I'm not really a fan of applications that um, kind of simulate paint on the computer. Um, I have started my uh, kind of adventure with uh, digital painting with uh, Coral Painter, which uh, was one of the applications that tried to do this really early on. And um, it was not a good painting experience. Um, I didn't like um, that the, the application actually did a lot of stuff, uh, but um, it was really hard to control and it had a lot of options that I, uh, I, I didn't know how to use them and, and what to, to turn on or off to, to get the effect that I wanted. So that was... Um, not really good, but uh, well, I had this app because I was uh, s kind of sponsored by Coral at that point, so I had it, uh, but I didn't like it. So I don't know, maybe that's why uh, now also I don't really, I'm not really a fan of uh, applications that simulate the, the natural media, but I don't know, maybe someday there will be an application that will be so good and so easy to control that um, I will uh, be tempted to try it. For now, I I, I feel that it's, there it's not really necessary for a, a digital painting app to, to, to do c this kind of stuff, but um, that's just me. So here I'm also trying to paint some like shop insides without putting so much detail on so it's not um, like overwhelming the the, the uh, this part of the scene um, okay so answering your question I don't think that art style has anything to do with uh, drawing medium so you can have the same art style when painting digitally and the same art style when painting um, by hand um i could do similar a similar picture uh with gouache for example and it would look not really exactly the same but uh it would have similar style i guess so um i think that uh, the way you paint is not um tied to um the tool that you are using but mostly it's just a painting style So I think that both digital and uh, analog is good. It they they both have their um, merits and things that are difficult to do. Like if I was going to, for example, to paint fifty backgrounds for animation movie, I would not go for uh, hand painted because. Um, it's just a lot of uh, a lot a lot easier to do this in digital especially that you can like put things between layers and put characters between layers and so on uh, but if i want something more painterly and i want just uh, freedom of expression and so on and just want to sketch something or paint something um, i would go for watercolors for example so it just depends on what you are what you want to do Yeah, I mean, some people think that um, not a being able to undo is the greatest thing. 
and some people think that not being able to undo is the, the, the worst thing it really depends on your style and your kind of frame of mind i guess Uh, there is no, me uh, I mean, about the painting the, the, the patterns, I, I, I guess there is no like method to do it, but I try to imagine the pattern flat and then try to imagine how it would kind of wrap the 3D object. And um, that's just a matter of exercise, I guess, to be able to imagine it. certificates I guess let's paint Akumadi just roughly something is there So we have a shop, yay! Uh, I need to paint some things here. This is the layer here. This is the shadow on it. Okay, so let me make a shadow in here. And we need a layer that's on top of it. This is actually on top of it, but Let's go with this one. And let's make bars like this. Maybe a bit thicker. Okay. Something like this. And I'll go for the line lever. Oh, no. Line la layer for this part and change my brush to this wrong one and add some details here. So the door is more three dimensional and so on. Should extend a bit lower. I don't know, I have my settings on mostly the same settings as usual, so it should be okay. that at some level um, it requires the same amount of kind of artistic sense and um, knowledge to do a nice picture with digital and with traditional some of the traditional tools are harder to manipulate than um, the digital tools but then again it's also hard for some um, art to make the digital uh, look finished and nice and not kind of cheap uh, it may be easier to use the digital but it's also but I think it's kind of harder to make it look like it's a finished piece of art and not just a digital illustration that someone did and, and posted online I don't recommend using 3D models in painting um, just because uh, 
it's really easy to get really stiff at the things that you are doing uh, if you are using 3d objects um, i know that clip studio has the ability of putting like 3d uh, models and objects uh, on to the scene so you can uh, use them as a reference and it's kind of nice to uh, have the ability so i would maybe recommend it to pe people who are either really beginners so they want to study the the, the forms of objects or they are really advanced and um, even though they are drawing from a reference from a 3d uh, reference the they know how to do it so the picture does not become stiff and kind of squarish and digital looking uh, for everyone else, I would I would say not using 3D reference is better uh, because one you learn how the objects look uh, in kind of your head, so you learn the ability to imagine uh, objects from different uh, points of view, perspectives, angles, and so on, and drawing them. And uh, the second thing is that if you don't know what you're doing 100% with the 3D object. Um, you can end up with a scene that's really um, obviously traced in th from a 3D object, which is not good. Um, that's why um, a lot of artists that do 3D animation have problems with this because always they look kind of similar and have a similar looking kind of lens uh, through which like the objects are portrayed and the angle of, of the camera is similar and... Um, uh, it's it's hard to you have to be really good at um, as a camera operator to make a 3d look interesting in uh, in the camera and angle and perspective way so I would um, not recommend doing it maybe in kind of limited way if you are have it in a different window and you can uh you have an object that you can turn around and then look at it from different angles and then try to sketch it for example and so on but um i would not put it like directly into the scene and try to trace it for example or do something like this uh i think photo bashing is okay for the things that it's meant to be if you use it uh, creatively it's okay like for example, it's good if you have to uh, produce 20 uh, concepts for a scene and you still don't know if this even will be accepted or used anywhere. And it, this is uh, just an idea that you are throwing for the stuff that will paint something from it. Uh, or if you are using it creatively, uh, for example, um, if you look at the backgrounds that were done for uh, Hannah and Alice that we did there we use a lot of photographs there uh, because the whole movie was actually shot first um, on film and then turned like uh, kind of into an animation in a weird way uh, but also if you look um, for example on uh, at the new Netflix animation which is the city of ghosts uh, they use like real photos, real locations, and then add uh, elements there, paint over these photos, and do ki all kinds of interesting things with them, which is also really, really creative and or interesting. So I guess if you are doing something interesting and creative with it, um, it's good. But if you are just using photos to make your pictures look more realistic and kind of nice, um, then that's just that. They're just nicely edited photos that look nice and um, it's okay, but um, it, kind of, it, it kind of really it's kind of limiting also because uh, you already have some limits that you cannot um, change because the photo looks as it looks. Just to be sure, I'm going to paint this part here.
okay so i guess i'll just go for another 20 minutes or so so if you have any uh questions that you would like to ask just ask in the chat and if i happen <laughs> to spot them we i will try to answer and if i can answer them Um, I think for sure you can um, have art as your pastime. Um, I have um, electronics and IT and, and computers as my pastime, which is not also the simplest thing. Uh, so I think it's really possible to have art as a, as a pastime, as a hobby and still do something interesting in it. Okay, I'll add a highlight here. Um, you just kind of have to remember that um, what you see online and what you love, probably the movies that you love and the works that you love uh, are a result of many, 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 many spent hours on uh, getting better. Something that you often cannot do if it's just a hobby. So if you are comfortable with um, what you're doing as a hobby and what if you are doing it just for fun and if you don't care so much uh, about like uh, making the best animation or the best art and can be content with what you're doing and having fun just by doing it, then I think it's okay. But um, it's really easy, especially lately, to have these kind of awesome pieces of art, awesome uh, examples of art that can be uh, a lot intimi intimidating a lot. Well, I guess I missed a layer here, but uh, let's just paint over it and be done with it. It's not something I will fix later anyway, I, I hope. <laughs> Even for a professional artist who does uh, art as a full-time job, it's really hard sometimes to just go on uh, Instagram and see all the awesome things that everyone is doing. <laughs> so uh, for a person that is doing this as a hobby, uh, it can be more even harder, I guess. I like to add these small kind of details here and there, like a plaque or something, maybe a different color. Let's find some, let's find the color somewhere, uh, like this. Uh, I have, I haven't been to India, no. The only countries I have been to uh, are really few, just and I have been to Poland, Scotland, and Japan. <laughs> so I don't have a long list. Okay, uh, I want to take care of this part here. Uh, I recommend using books that have art that you would like to do yourself. So if you like art that is done, for example, by Studio Ghibli, or you like art that is more like um, American cartoons, like um, Adventure Time or something, uh, just buy books from these and try to kind of um, reverse engineer the methods they use. Uh, look at the... That's kind of interesting uh, approach, but because, uh, for example, 
if you listen to some lectures by um, authors, people who write novels and so on, uh, they will often say that um, they don't read um, the novels as a reader, they read them as a writer, so they try to look at the, the technical things, uh, how they are done, how they move, how they uh, make the story, how they move the characters and so on, and what uh, methods and tools they use to make this all happen. And this is the same way that you have to look at uh, art if you want to do art. So if you want to make backgrounds, look at backgrounds that you like and try to analyze what, um, how they were done and uh, how they painted uh, this or that. And even like smallest details like oh how they did this rock or how they did this uh, leaves or uh, this sky or whatever are worthy of like this reverse engineering and um, you can learn really a lot from this. Uh, I didn't use any books that explain to you like oh you if you want to draw, draw a rock just do it like this I uh, used books from just artists that I liked and tried to emulate some of the methods that they used in their art um, not like redrawing the pieces but sometimes also redrawing the pieces for practice but um, mostly trying to figure out okay um, I thought that, um, for example, um, in the animation industry, everyone uses like a lot of brushes for all kinds of stuff, but it appears that everything is done with just this one kind of round brush and uh, that's it. And that was actually true. Um, so you really have to look really, really closely uh, at um, the art that is in uh books like that um, especially I know that uh, myself have these uh, have this um, thing lately that even when I'm uh, browsing for example Instagram or something I will not spend a lot of time looking at one uh, illustration I would just go like swipe swipe and that's it but um, the most important thing is to look really closely at stuff and try to analyze how it's done Uh, so you can buy the, the books by Studio Ghibli, you can buy uh, books from uh, Mamoru Hosoda's animations, but they use a bit more 3D, so it's kind of stiff. Um, you can buy books from Makoto Shinkai, it also has a bit backgrounds uh, made by me uh, in it. Let's save. Uh, most of the Studio Ghibli stuff is made traditionally, but if you count the amount of editing and so on that's put on uh, the traditionally made stuff, it's uh, a lot. And may probably they uh, started doing some digital too, I don't know. Uh, but I'm certain that they use digital for effects and 3D and, s and, and editing and it's the whole pro editing process and coloring process is in 3D, uh, di in di it's in digital. Okay, let's add some details on the roof here. Make this layer, let's make it a bit darker. I also add like a lighter highlight on some of the edges and a green highlight, a uh, green part here with a black edge. 
something like that which will add it a bit more a bit more dimension to it so it looks nice yay and because this part on which this whole thing kind of hangs should be from the same material i'll color it a bit darker this oh no but it's under the shadow layer so no uh, let's turn on the shadow and let's see how it looks first shadow where is the shadow layer for this building this here oh yeah it's, uh, it's kind of okay actually I still have to figure out what to put in these signs because I want to put something nice in them. And I like to make my signs um, as realistic as possible. So because the, the letter the lettering in a picture like this is really important. Okay, that kind of looks okay. It's a bit too much. Something like this yeah okay for a really difficult thing i think they used uh photo reference like video reference for like really close-ups of the iphones and so on but they used also like really really big textures with a lot of detail on them and painted a lot of details in them so um, even if something is really small in the animation um, a lot of times it's uh, bigger like a material that is used is bigger uh. no uh, feel free to ask maybe a few times because i look at my picture i don't look at my ipad so much so um if you want me to answer your question just uh, ans uh, ask it and uh, maybe keep it short so i can just read it and uh, talk about it a bit uh I think if it if it comes to your way <laughs> of doing things, mm, I think it's best to ask yourself what you would like to create in the end. Would you like to create a comic, or you would you like to create a, a design of a house, or would you like to be part of an animation uh, uh, studio or whatever? Um, I think that what you would like to create should define what you uh, have to do. So for me, for example, um, I would like to do a comic. So I wish I, s <laughs> I did more character design stuff and I wish I did more character drawings. Uh, when I was, when I still had a lot of time to, to, to just um, do random things and try them out. Uh, so if you want to do a comic, um, you know what you have to do. You have to do more characters, study character drawing and expression, character expressions and how to express feelings and how to express emotions and at the same time, uh, how to express uh, the atmosphere, for example, in a scene, how to do dialogue and how to do effects and movement and uh, make the picture, even though they are not moving, uh, make them look like they are moving and so on. But if you want to do animation, you have to actually try to move them around and, and, and um, figure out how to do movement and so on. 
So um, I think uh, that it just depends on what do you want to do as a project. And also um, just going like in and, and training to do backgrounds can be really uh, boring. <laughs> But if you have a project that you want to do, like a scene that you want to realize and um, you need a background, you just go and paint the background. And when you put the characters in and you make them move and so on and you see the final result, uh, you feel kind of... Um, encouraged to do more, which is really... Uh, important to encourage yourself to do more so for example if you want to it's kind of a double way kind of thing uh, if you want to be better at drawing characters just draw a comic uh, but if you want to draw a comic just draw better characters <laughs> try to try to learn how to do better characters so that's that if you if you don't know what to do um what to learn but you want you know what to create then just start learning the things that you need to create your thing but if you don't know what you want to create but you like to draw characters try to car cre create a, a comic for example ah a bookshelf tour yeah i could i could do a bookshelf tour though um my bookshelves are not so big. Um, I have almost all of the Ghibli uh, art series uh, books and some other albums. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, I, I'll add it to my list of videos. Uh, okay, and I'll add a layer here. Psh, make it yellow yellow and clip to layer below uh zero na tatem ono to pokaje mi tylko tak a bez layer nie nateru kara ato de chotto ao to kasanete kasane mm Another benefit of having all the things on separate layers in folders is that I can put some like tone curve or something on it to make it uh, more seem like far in the distance or something. Uh, so this helps a lot if you have stuff on uh, separate folders, you can clip the filter only for to this folder. So now I have like a control thing that I can put on um, just this building in the background I can group it again so it doesn't like bother me here so now I, now I have like all these buildings on separate layers I can control how dark and how light they are and so on uh, in the animation studio we would we would do this to an extreme we would have uh, layers for everything so the final Photoshop file would end really really huge with a lot of layers uh, so much so that um, some of the computers that we were using for your name, for example, had a bit of a hard time to cope with this. Uh, but I'm happy to um, say that I have no problems with um, Clip Studio here. Uh, and again, I'm uh, and again I'm running on the new um, Mac Mini. So this thing. Be less color, a bit brighter. One template here. <laughs> uh, y yes, maybe not entire Japan. It smells like a bookstore, but there are a lot of bookstores and there are a lot of used bookstores. And you can also easily buy used books uh, online using the Mercari or. Um, 
Yahoo auction uh, site and you can buy some books really cheap most of the art books that I bought I still bought when I was a student so um, I was really kind of hunting for used books when I was um, in books book uh, of stores and so on uh, yeah there's also the, the, the like the network of book of stores which sell like used books and stuff and you can sometimes get their um, like art books and so on with really nice prices um, this is something I would really like to see in Poland for example where um, we we had some bookstores but from what I hear recently is that a lot of bookstores are getting uh, bankrupt and um, they are not there anymore so um, in Japan it's one of the things that I really like ab ja uh, about Japan is that the readership is really strong and you have a lot of places that you can go and buy a book uh, and even use book and you can also go and sell a book really easily uh, so other people can read it later if if you tell me one of the 10 10 things that they like about japan the most is, is probably the the bookstores though i cannot re <laughs> read japanese so much so that's a that's a bummer I have been using a PC for years and years. Uh, I I was a PC guy. I built my own PCs and so on. But when I was in high school, um, I I just got fed up with um, trying to figure out why the motherboard that I bought uh, is going beep when it should go just on. <laughs> Uh, and after like hours of searching um, it, it, it happened that the motherboard that I bought was not compatible with the CPU that I bought and the, it reported that it's too hot even though it was not so hot and it would, would go beep even though it was kind of cool and uh, I was just oh I have enough of this I bought a uh, power uh, Mac G4 I think installed Coral Painter on it because uh, Coral Painter had like a um, Mac version and um, and I was like but this works faster than my PC even though it's older than, I p than my PC for like uh, three years or four or whatever uh, so uh, since then I um, just buy a Mac uh, use it sell it when uh, I buy the next one and uh, that's it and there were times when uh, the new Macs were not really exciting and were just usual laptops that had their own minuses and, and so on uh, but I'm happy to say that um, the new um, Mac mini with the new Apple processor is really 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 better than the um, Intel ones. Uh, I had the the most powerful Intel uh, laptop for my work, and it will it would go um, loud on the fan all the time. It would be hot. I could not record audio on it because the fan was so loud. Uh, but the new Mac with the M1 CPU, uh, I haven't had it turn on the fan once yet. Uh, even though I'm, I'm making videos on it and I render stuff and um, I handle 4K video and, and do files that are really big. It works really well and um, stays cool and is fast. I'm really excited about the M1. Um, uh, iPad I will be buying it when it comes out um, I wish it had a bit bigger screen but yeah
But a lot of people uh, in the animation studio that I worked at uh, used actually Windows PCs for uh, they w their work. I think it was like half and half uh, PCs and Macs, just uh, whatever uh, the person preferred. And um, the person next to me was actually using Windows. And I think we had similar amounts of problems with with photoshop and stuff but uh, in my case it was just because i really like to experiment and i ins install all the updates as soon as they are available and do weird stuff with my um, uh, with my computer because i like to upgrade and and i like to install new things and even though he didn't <laughs> Uh, he had uh, a similar amount of problems uh, because uh, his computer just decided to do uh, an update or overnight or something, uh, or the drivers for 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 the tablet stopped working or and so on. So I think uh, it doesn't matter so much, but. Um, uh, then the I, uh, the Mac Mini is not fanless, but uh, to be honest, I haven't I have hear heard it only once when it was updating something and uh, it just like turned it turned it on to test it I guess, uh, but uh, I haven't heard it spin up the fan once since I bought it like two months or three months ago. Uh, so I'm really happy because I can record audio for my. Um, YouTube videos just with it uh, on my desk and uh, so far I was doing it on my iPad because the iPad doesn't have any fan fans uh, so it's silent and now the Mac mini is also silent even though I'm using it on the 5k uh, monitor so I have the uh, LG 5k uh, display uh, so it's kind it's really big actually and usually I would expect it to go heavy on the fan but it's really really silent I like PCs because you can up upgrade stuff there and I like upgrading stuff I like like um, I like to put some memory inside I would like to put uh, a drive or, or two inside if I could so if the Mac mini was uh, a unit that you would be able to open and like replace memory and stuff that would be perfect but I know that it's fast that just because uh, you cannot open it <laughs> and replace anything in it so yeah I would be happy to see Ma Mac OS but I don't really think it's needed so much right now um, you can do a lot of stuff that uh, macOS can do on the iPad without macOS. So, I mean, recently you can you can do almost anything. You can copy files. You can open hard drives. You can connect devices. Uh, what I would like to see is another USB-C port, which would be good to connect stuff. Like I would like to connect um, the charger and some headphones, for example, at the same time. <laughs> or um, a video um, output and something else. I know I can do it through a dongle, but uh, the dongles are like not really reliable. No, Apple pencils are better, I think. I actually like the, the way Apple pencil does pressure better than Wacom. Uh, just because the how the, the tip of the pen does not go clunk clunk like the one on the Wacom, especially if it gets, if it gets a bit old, it gets a bit loose. I actually prefer how um, the pen on the uh, uh, on the iPad works. I don't know why Wacom has not fixed this yet. It been it's been years and years, but um, as soon as you start using the the the, the Intuos pen, it, it gets loose kind of uh, inside and.
Oh no, that's that's kind of weird. It's the camera on my monitor actually. That's weird. Okay, it stopped. I guess the light is flickering from my from my head. <laughs> I have my good camera here filming my hands so uh, for my for my face I'm only using the, the the camera from from the monitor so the just the webcam so probably is the is an exposure auto exposure kind of thing No, I have not used the sidecar thing yet. I ha I want to try it because it, it looks kind of interesting. Uh, to be honest, I, I have enough power and tools to use even if I just use uh, Procreate on the iPad. So I don't have so much use of, of the sidecar. Um, maybe if I, if I try to use the iPad to paint stuff using Clip Studio on my computer. Uh, but yeah, uh, having the ability itself is really good and maybe I can use it also to do some streaming from the iPad if I can make it like work the other way around. That would also maybe be interesting. Um, uh, One thing about the Japanese industry is um, it, it has a lot of downsides which you don't have to replicate to get a nice animation out of like foreign animation studios. I think that a lot of foreign animation studios are doing a lot of great work already. Um, I would like to see more hand painted like 2d animation which would be really really nice to see uh, it's kind of a shame if if the knowledge of the animators that are kind of retiring right now would go uh, without any um, like next generation to to uh, continue it that would be a great shame so I'm happy that, for example, Studio Ghibli is now making anima an animation using new stuff. It takes a lot of time to them for them to finish it, but maybe some people will learn uh, uh, en enough to 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 um, spread this knowledge. Um, so I don't know if it's really necessary to re replicate uh, the Japanese industry outside of Japan. Um, some solutions would be better probably left here especially that the image of the industry and the image of the animator um, is so kind of warped here it's like you have the image of the mangaka so the manga creator who does not do anything just do manga and has no pri private life and does not sleep and only has like a a room where you, he has his like five or six assistants that or are also like trying to be mangakas and he has no kids or if he has a, a, a family he has no kids so um, that's uh, not r real it's just like the image that people have and the worst thing is that some people actually go and and do it like this 
for years uh, because they don't know better, I don't know, or, or they kind of feel comfortable in this kind of m martyrdom of a, s of, a s of a sort. And it's also in the animation, I think. Um, like the image, one of the things that was great about Hayao Miyazaki is his animations, but he, what he did. Uh, but one of the things that that's bad about him is that he kind of propelled this image of a, of, a, of a director who knows everything and is perfect and is a genius and, and should be respected and on all accounts and cannot be wrong and so on. And uh, uh, you had... Um, Osamu Tezuka, who, who kind of worked while on aeroplane being late five hours on the deadline, but because the aeroplane was going like back in the time zones, he managed to fax his uh, finished manga when he landed in New York or something. And the magazine was able to publish it on time or something. So, so like crazy <laughs> work um, uh, ethic, <laughs> actually. And... Um, it's it's uh, but you can find good examples in, in in Japan also too. So I think that it's not really necessary to to uh, replicate the Japanese industry, but it's necessary to uh, study the knowledge of the Japanese 2D animators that do animations in in 2D with a pencil or digital or whatever, and try to preserve this knowledge because it's really um, unique um, uh, your 3d animator will not be able to uh, draw and paint like this probably uh, just because it's not what he does then again your 2d animator would not make you a 3d animation so I think it's it's it, it would be really important to preserve this knowledge rather than try to um, like recreate animation studios of Japan like outside of Japan and it's um, if it would be uh, and it would be okay if there was like one two people that that did it this way and you'll be like oh he's a genius he can uh, go without sleeping for uh, like whatever amount of time or, or something uh, or he's okay with working like seven days a week for 18 hours and then just goes to sleep for three and and so on uh, but this is a fa false image it's like telling everyone to be Steve Jobs or whatever and it's like really um, shallow because you only you you do not become steve jobs by um wearing turtlenecks and and glasses and so on and but this image is kind of popular and it's the standard thing that you can see everywhere uh even in like um shows that uh and comics and uh, animations that show you how to be a comic artist or how a, a life of a comic artist looks like uh, you will like find these examples and I think it's really high time to get rid of, 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 of these and what you don't hear a lot is uh, for example that the author of um, uh, Hagaren so um, uh, Fumeto Alchemist uh, had two uh, children while she was doing the <laughs> the manga uh, mon monthly or weekly in the magazine like three mangas at, at once or something so you c you can do it wi without like putting uh, every el everything else on hold and 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 um, like quitting everything else in your life uh, is being a freelancer stressful? Yes. But then again, um, uh, working in an animation studio where um, the, the animation studio decides your work um, instead of you, tells you what you have to do in this limited amount of time and it has to be this good and it has to, and you will only get like this amount of pay for it, uh, is stressful also and in a different way.
and a lot of people will try to tell you that being a freelancer is really dangerous and being a freelancer is only for like the chosen ones that um, know that are really good and um, can do everything on their own and can get the jobs and be like perfect and uh, have a lot of followers or whatever um, we experienced something like that with Kana a lot when we tried to decide if uh, if we are going to go freelance or not and um, most of the people that will tell you that freelance is really really suck uh, that freelance really sucks uh, w are not people that did freelance or did not manage to do freelance uh, so try it in a safe way of course but it's worth uh, giving a try and by a safe way i mean um, you have to have at least some uh, view on what you are going to do and for how much uh, pay before you start so for example when uh, i started uh, as a freelancer um, i had um, the contract for my first book decided so I knew what I was going to do after I uh, leave the studio. I was not going just to leave the studio and be like, oh, okay, let's look for a job. Uh, but I already had like a contract for uh, the book and I had enough um, kind of work done, my own work done to uh, show it as a portfolio. And I had some uh, people that knew about my work. Some of you already followed me probably on the internet. Uh, so I was not jumping like uh, straight into unknown, but um, I already had some things like planned and I knew that I can at least survive for a year or so uh, on my own. I know about the Calipeg app. I haven't uh, tested it yet. I have it installed, but uh, I haven't had time to uh, test it. It looks really nice. Uh, the only beef I have with it is that I have to pay monthly for it, so um, which I don't like. But other than that, it 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 sounds amazing. So I want to try it. We have been uh, talking a, lo a lot with Kana about the genius trope. So in Japan, it's a uh, Tensai trope. And we came to the con conclusion that um, you maybe have some people who don't mind trying hard so much than other people, but that's probably the only difference between people. Um, I don't think that you probably have a really rare case when uh, someone is really a genius and uh, can do something that no one else could even thought about think about uh, without learning anything and without doing like hard pre preparation work but overall we think that it's a bit harmful actually uh, trope because it prevents a lot of people trying to uh, from from trying to to do what they want to do actually uh, because you already see these um, success stories and you think oh I can never be so good yes you can never be so good at first but this person has not like uh, made an animated movie from from nothing um, and he didn't try just from yesterday uh, he spent 30 years first doing television animation for like uh, NHK or whatever uh, and then he knew what to do when uh, a chance came when he tried to he, he could be a, a animation director and that's why uh, biographies are really nice because you can actually read what the person was doing for the 30 years uh, before you actually heard about her or him so I recommend reading biographies or interviews or stuff like that.
I, I'm really excited about the M1 iPad Pro. I will be buying it when it comes out. Probably Kana is uh, taking the, 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 the one that I have because she wants the bigger one a bit because she's doing all her comics with the iPad. And maybe we'll, if, if, if it's really a lot more efficient than the uh, big one right now, uh, we will buy another one for Kana also because she is using the iPad as her my main tool for drawing right now. Uh, but I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is that um, I hope that uh, companies like uh, the one that makes uh, Procreate and so on uh, allow us to use uh, this power that uh, this uh, iPad Pro has. Uh, because I'm afraid that they will keep the layer limit, for example, and all these kinds of limits there uh, to um, allow the app to be used by the lower spec uh, iPads also. So I have more hope, for example, for um, Art Studio Pro, which doesn't have like a hard cap over the amount of layers that you can have. Uh, but just gets really slow when you put too much layers. So it doesn't have this artificial kind of limit, uh, which may work really well on an iPad, which is really freaking fast, if it has the same uh, CPU like the, the computer that I'm using right now. Uh, as you can see, I'm streaming right now. I have 4,500 pixels uh, picture. Um, with a lot of layers and it doesn't lag at all so if the new, uh, new ipad has the same specs um that would be awesome i think they are worth the price especially the pro ones uh, i think you can do a lot of things with them that are uh, how do you call it that are enough to um, to say that um, the, the the tool was worth its price. I mean, I did all the pictures for the um, Docomo calendar that I'm posting recently on YouTube on the iPad uh, Pro. So um, I can say that um, the price that I paid for the iPad Pro uh, was just a, a part of the, the money that I got for this commission. So um, it earned for itself a lot. I use it for a lot of things. So I think it, it was definitely worth it. I would spend a lot more time uh, painting these on the computer. I felt a lot, of, a lot more comfortable painting it on uh, the iPad. So just for that, I think it was worth its price. If you are a professional doing stuff like illustrations, that's really, really, uh, worth its price. If uh, you are uh, uh, like a hobbyist or you s you're just starting, I I think that even the slower uh, iPads, the, the the cheaper ones, are are a good tool um, for digital painting. You would have to buy like uh, I don't know iPad, uh, a Photoshop, and a tablet or whatever. So instead of that, if you buy the iPad, it's enough. Uh, you can uh, get people to commission you uh, by doing good work and showing it off on the internet. And by ma doing good work, I mean like work that someone would like to pay for at least. So, for example, I got I um, did the. Uh, I did the calendar for Docomo and I got uh, three commission, I think three offers for other cal calendars. I won't do it because um, I don't have an interest for making more calendars and be a calendar artist, uh, but because I did the first one and I showed it off on YouTube and all kinds of places, um, now other companies will, would like me to do a calendar for them. So, um, and I did, I got my first work as a background artist uh, in, in Japan because I did an animation and show it off on the internet. Um, and, and also like 
showed it off directly to the company that I wanted I wanted to work at uh, I wanted to work at so yeah make it then tell everybody <laughs> Uh, the best fountain pen for detailed drawings is the one that feels best for you when you go and test a lot of fountain pens. I recommend this approach. I don't think there there is like one fountain pen that I can uh, I can recommend for you because you have a different hand with a different pressure, and uh, you have different lines that I do. So I would recommend going to a place that has a lot of fountain pens and you can test a lot of them and choose one that um, is okay for your budget and for your hand. Like for example, Kana uses a lot of uh, Pelican fountain pens. She has two of them, uh, but I have uh, Pilots and uh, one Mont, Mont Blanc uh, recently. So um, it just depends on the person and uh, yeah. But recently I have been kind of fascinated with a uh, bow pen. So I have this bow pen. Which will not focus. Like this one. Which is weird because it's really just a bit of metal with this kind of thing here. You open it and you take the lead out and just close the thing here and it stays so I have been trying this for drawing recently just because this is um, waterproof also which is interesting um, so yeah it just depends on the person and depends what you do what you want to use it for um, I would go for like a test take a sketchbook with you uh, if there is a place that you can test stuff um, uh, yeah in the pandemic times it's a bit harder <laughs> to test pens uh, other approach is to look for artists that you kind of like and ask them or try to check what they use uh, from my uh, perspective I can recommend the pilot uh, fountain pens I use I think three or four of them uh, different ones but uh, Japanese fountain pens have uh, thinner and sharper tips than uh, European ones so if you like thin and sharp lines um, probably I would go for a Japanese fountain pen like a pilot um, if you like more roundish and more thicker ones I would go for European ones like Lamy or Pelican I think it's really okay to have as many layers as you want um, usually for a drawing like this I would make a lot of layers but uh, we in the animation studio we would have so many layers that it was actually uh, getting ridiculous um, because we would have a layer for everything and it just makes it easier to fix stuff later but um, if you feel that uh, it's kind of oppressive and it's got dif it, and it gets difficult uh, make yourself a hard limit for layers it's easy on the iPad because it has a hard limit on layers uh, I think you can have like 30 or, or something uh, on bigger files so um, yeah it doesn't really matter if you have a lot of layers it's just easier to fix things later So for example, uh, getting back to the pens, uh, when I uh, look at uh, some people drawing, I will see what pens they use. And I'll be like, oh, I need a Pilot Falcon whatever. And I'll, go I'll get to the pi uh, Pilot Star in Ginza or whatever, and I'll test some of them, and in the end I will uh, end up buying a different one that uh, I saw uh, the person <laughs> using, or I would no not don't buy it because uh, it just does didn't work for me. I had this few times already so it's uh, actually really really um, a personal thing and um, it's nice if you have a place that you can go and test them uh, 
you can use the if black i would use the car carbon ink which is made by platinum uh, but um, you have to be careful with it because uh, if it gets um, dry in your fountain pen uh, you will probably have a broken front fountain pen only so um, i would recommend being very very careful careful with it uh, and uh, I have been also using uh, the blue inks from um, which called Seiboku and Souboku, which are made by I think Sailor, um, and these are blue black inks which are also really really waterproof. These are the inks I used for um, Tokyo at night to make all the lines, and they worked great. And but you also have to be really careful with them, not to leave them so they dry up and clog your pen. Uh, this goes for any waterproof ink or any ink at all, but waterproof inks, uh, especially because most of them have uh, something in them that makes the ink waterproof, like uh, acrylic um, uh, resin or something um, that makes it waterproof. And if this dries in your fountain pen, you can then take it out only with solvents, which will probably damage your pen and um, make it unusable. Uh, so it's really good to have a fountain pen that's um, meant to be used with um, weird inks like the Indigraph that I use somet sometimes or a pen that you can um, take apart for example which also sometimes is possible uh, so for example I love fountain pens I really uh, like to draw with them but for waterproof stuff I would use not my uh, good fountain pens like expensive ones and unique ones I would use the Indigraph which is uh, meant for uh, waterproof inks hello i think we'll be uh, ending soon because we are uh, 10 minutes uh, to an hour is it, is it right no we're already two hours and 40 minutes in that's long Uh, this is 4,500 by 2,500. It, it's here on the top. You can see it actually probably if you make a, uh, your video on a big screen. So it's 4,500 almost. It's bigger than for 4K uh, video. you mean like a uh, palette of colors or it, it depends on what work you are doing uh, i don't think there is one palette that is used for for everything i like to have a palette with some colors that i like in the in the kind of swatches kind of uh, thing in in the app i use but um mostly it depends on the atmosphere of the piece i'm trying to achieve um, more than on any kind of preset presets that I have. I, I'm still alive. <laughs> Certainly. I was uh, a bit less active on um, YouTube and other social media for a few weeks because I was doing some uh, like this thing also, but some other things uh but we also had some health and life related things that we had to attend to um and we got a dog which was also um time consuming but uh i'm kind of getting back to uh my rhythm Yes, but I, I like to take breaks from time to time on my work, so uh, I don't get tired so easily.
Uh, okay. I still uh, I still have to figure out the, the all, like all the brush settings. I I'm not really yet proficient enough in all these settings. Uh, the dog's name is Asa, which uh, means Jap in, in Japanese morning. I, she is actually sleeping right now but um that's only because uh, she is in her kind of enclosure thing uh, she's only like four or five days uh, with us so uh, she's not yet um vaccined uh, so we cannot um go outside with 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 her so um she stays she stays inside and we take her out just a few times a day for like an hour or some something to uh, train her a bit and uh, make her used to stuff but she's still very small so you'll probably see her in some videos and photos and stuff um, where is it where is it uh, clip yes okay uh, Kana visited Poland twice uh, we would actually like to go um, as soon as um, the pandemic is, is better. Uh, we were going to go when the pandemic hit, actually. Um, we were going to go to an event in France and uh, then to visit uh, Poland, my family and so on. Our family. Uh, but um, it was straight on with the pandemic uh, start. We had to cancel everything. Uh, we didn't manage to cancel everything because uh, we did not expect anything like this. So all the flights and, and everything, we had to just pay for it, even though we did not go. Uh, so that was a bummer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we would like to go again um, when things will allow for it, but it doesn't look like we will be able to go um, soon. Uh, multiply make it a bit so by adding shadows like this under the windows like here I can make it appear like the window frames are uh, mirrored in the in the window panes in the in the window glass so it looks more kind of three-dimensional and interesting I I already talked about this, but no, I don't recommend any books. Maybe if you can, uh, if you want to learn some like really really basic stuff, you can buy a book about uh, perspective and so on. Uh, but I would recommend more buying books that have art in in them that you really like and studying them uh, really slowly, really really uh, deep deeply. <laughs> um, Somehow it's it's easier to study from a book um, than just scroll things on the internet because you tend to pay more attention to a book that you bought and you have in your hands than um, some images that you found on Pinterest or whatever. That's that's um, I'm happy about that. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, I I sometimes get offers for um, like drawing um, backgrounds for music videos and so on, but I'm still to hit uh, 
with um, a music with a song that I really, really like because I would probably uh, draw something for uh, a song like a YouTube video uh, only for a song that I really, really like. Um, I like a lot of YouTube music and I listen to a lot of YouTube music, but um, to for me to kind of get into the vibe and um, uh, do like a YouTube um, drawing uh, for a music video or for a stream or something it would be it would have to be really perfect for for my tastes it's really weird because i started this this youtube channel uh, just as a way to show um the work that kind of goes into the picture i wanted to show somehow the backstory that goes into each of the work that i works that i do uh so i'm kind of happy that this turned out to be um helpful and interesting for more people that i than i expected Then again, I'm really happy also that um, uh, a lot of you uh, who visit my channel and comment on my videos um, are, a lot of you are like, all of you are really, really good people. <laughs> um, I'm kind of happy that um, I don't have so much like weird comments or rude comments or anything like this to deal with. Um, we had a lot of this in, in, in Kana's case because her uh, videos of, of people eating things uh, kind of got viral and, and spread out through uh, YouTube and all kinds of weird services and even tele television like fe featured it in a, you know, like a program about social media or something. And we had to deal uh, with a lot of uh, kind of rude and offensive and um, just hurtful comments coming from I don't know where actually in all kinds of languages um, so I'm I'm really, really happy that the community that um, kind of formed around the videos that I upload seems to be um, <laughs> kind of pure and and nice and just wholesome people uh, I will try to get live more often uh, especially that I'm planning to do a illustration series based on the mm, animation that I'm planning to do uh, so I'll be doing like concept um, art like things and i'll probably do them digitally or i don't know probably uh so i'll be doing more um streaming and i also want to do uh, more some experiments with the uh, with the um uh, ball pen that i bought so yeah no sleep studio it's not a sleep studio it's clip studio I have to fin fix it later. Yes, I'm I'm working on, on an animation, like a really short thing, um, like a, fun, a science fiction e thing. Uh, I already I'm already posting some. Um, like concept arts and stuff on uh, the Patreon and a bit on um, and a bit on uh, Instagram also but um, yeah I have to um, find kind of the style that I want for it so I'll be doing some illustrations based on the world that I created for it uh, just to find out uh, where I want to go with it this is again learning a bit from Hayao Miyazaki uh, when he is doing an animation project he first does a lot of concept art 
uh, and he kind of looks for the picture that were, will start or be the root of the whole project. So, uh, for example, in Ponyo, he, he did a lot of um, illustrations and uh, at, uh, in, in um, he, when he did the illustration where Ponyo is like running on these weird fish-like things when the wave comes, it was like, oh, okay, this is like the illustration that's, uh, that is the, the main point of the, of the project. So uh, I know now what um, kind of spirit the project is. Um, so I want to look for something like that for my um, project that I'm currently working on and I'll be doing some illustrations for it, uh, probably digitally maybe. Uh, maybe like um, half and half, so painted digitally but maybe line work by hand, I don't know yet. There's folders and folders and folders, but I use the pick layer tool to click on stuff so I can pick the layer without um, folder diving too much. Okay, um, you know what? My battery in my camera is going down again uh, and we are three hours almost in. So um, I'll be uh, quitting it for, for now. I want to go for a walk maybe. Uh, so here's the full illustration. Let me uh, reset it and make the make it on the full screen like this. Um, so I will take away the line art, which is on top also, and turn on all the shadows and so on, so you can see how it wo looks right now. Um, I think this is the. Everything okay. So this is how it looks right now. I still have to finish some details, and I will be able to get into uh, doing the characters. I still have to ask Kana to design uh, some like lettering for me for the shop name and everything, so um, I can fill in the shop signs uh, on all the buildings uh, and just do the track, like and some of the buildings. Um, in the back. So in this uh, three hours stream I managed to more or less finish the building in the back, this one, and add a little details to the gate and to the building on the left, which is great. Okay, thank you for joining me. This has been a stream of me painting a clip an illustration using the Clip Studio Paint EX. This illustration was actually commissioned by uh, the company that makes Clip Studio Paint, but um, I am able to just speak my mind and tell you whatever I think about this application and how it uh, actually works. If you uh, want to know more about this uh, app, just Google it and there you will have prices and stuff. Um, yes, I will publish this as a video separately on my channel later as usual. Uh, but this uh, live stream will also be preserved if I can. Uh, it's it was kind of long. Okay, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. And stop.